Hello and welcome to this uh, special uh, conversation uh, we we will have today with uh, uh, with Parkala Prabhakar, uh, who needs no introduction. He, he's a very well-known political economist uh, and uh, and a public intellectual. Um, more lately, he his book, The Crooked Timber of New India, uh, which uh, which was discussed in the wire uh, at the very beginning la last year. Uh, by Karan Thapar, and uh, and subsequently his book has uh, gone around the country. Uh, Prabhakar has done several discussions uh, across India and several cities, and uh, indeed the book has been received very well. Uh, it is it is about essentially about a 360 degree uh, you know dissection of uh, of the last 10 years of uh, Modi regime. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's called the crooked uh, timber of new india uh, and uh, it's about uh, it's a collection of essays on on a republican crisis now why why i mentioned the book is today we are just going to talk to uh, uh, parakala prabhakar about some of the big claims made uh, in the in the government's uh, recently released white paper and before that in the interim budget uh, claims about how in the last 10 years uh, in the management of the economy, Indian economy, Indian political economy, how the government, uh, Modi government has claimed to have delivered welfare at scale. This is their words, not my words. And uh, they've delivered welfare in a way uh, that no other previous government has been able to do. That is the claim. Uh, they call it unprecedented, reaching the poorest of the poor and all vulnerable sections of society. In fact, both the interim budget, which also talked about 10 years of Modi government and their achievements, and the uh, white paper, they specifically talk about how this government has managed to keep a special focus in, in its delivery of welfare at scale, special focus on farmers, youth, the poor, and women. Of course, the, these are four categories and uh, they are overlapping categories uh, in the sense that they could be youth who are poor, they could be women who are poor, youth who could be farmers. So so we, we will broadly discuss uh, this claim uh, made by the Modi government. And what better time to discuss this uh, than, uh, than what we are facing on the borders of Delhi and Haryana with, with with lakhs and lakhs of farmers uh, gathering uh, to to agitate and protest and demand uh, what they had demanded in 21 when they uh, when the farmers uh, uh, squatted on the borders of delhi for for, for a year uh, it was something that shook the administration then uh, and it has this is this is being described as uh, uh, farmers Agitation 2.0. Uh, so uh, I, I, we will start with this because it it has an overlap with the the claims made by the white paper and the in, the interim budget. So 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 Parkala, uh, uh, very uh, welcome to the uh, to uh, this conversation. I just thought I should lay down lay down the background <coughs> of our discussion. So so how do you see Parkala the the farmers agitation now making a demand for something that they had already been uh, promised a lot of things. Uh, they had withdrawn the agitation uh, in 2021 uh, and subsequently they had, they had been in touch with the government. Now they've come back again. Uh, how do you read this? Against the backdrop of, co of course of the of the claims made by the government that there's been such a sharp and special focus on farmers, youth, poor and women. Yeah. Vindu, thank you very much for having me. Um, you know, in the introduction, what struck me is uh, the word that you used, the borders of Delhi. And you used it twice. You know, somehow it gives me an impression that, you know, uh, the government is defending borders, not against yeah. Pakistan, not against China, but, you know, against farmers, the borders of Delhi. That itself puts the, uh, puts the entire thing in a context, which, of course, is a sad commentary. Because the farm, I mean, you see, um, one thing I must say at this uh, stage, at the outset itself, 
is that let us not get into the 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 kind of arena that the government wants um, uh, people like like us to enter into in the sense that they want to show the entire debate as upa versus nda yeah i refuse to join that kind of a punch and judy show between uh, upa and uh, nda that's that's not the point true uh, the, the 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 terms of discourse need to be you know much more elaborate mm. uh, much more extensive i think we need to debate what is happening to as you said uh, farmers youth uh, women you know unemployed people you know the general uh, thing and then what's happening at the uh, uh, the 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 welfare front yeah now uh, look at the farmers agitation we had farmers agitation about 2 years ago and uh, you see we uh, it also talks uh, tells you the kind of uh, democratic uh, life that we are leading three farm bills were introduced and you know very well as well as i do that farm sector is directly or indirectly uh, impacts the largest number of people in terms of workforce in terms of uh, employment in terms of yeah. uh, you know uh, incomes and also pertains to the largest geography of india the farm yeah. sector now three laws were brought in i'm not going into the merits or demerits of the yeah. of the proposed uh, uh, yeah. measures yeah. but you see they, when they were brought in they were passed without even five minutes of discussion in the houses of parliament and then against that when agitations uh, have uh, been started the ruling party the ministers and everybody from the establishment had said that you know people who were agitating against the farm laws were anti national anti government anti india khalistani okay. stuck to the gang etc etc and then the prime minister decided to withdraw those laws and uh, there was an uh, announcement on the television and subsequently the the houses were called and when the houses assembled they were withdrawn again without any discussion so uh, measures that impact a large uh, chunk of our economy a large chunk of our geography directly indirectly impacting the lives of the largest number of people of this country you do something without discussion and you withdraw those without discussion and that again was a half house measure that is the reason why the farmers are again uh, on the roads yeah. today and and my, mind you venu these demands or some of these demands or the core of these demands are not new the yeah. farm sector if you look at the terms of trade between industry and farm and you know generally what is the credit of take that was available to the farmers you know what kind of a ownership rights and what kind of a marketing facilities what kind of a pricing and if you look at that these yeah. demands are as old as i tell you in 1936 all india kisan uh, conference all india kisan yeah. sabha had taken a huge procession you know that and yeah. these demands you know were partially met you know uh, cosmetically met here and there i'm not talking about just one government or the other but then the the, the attitude the present government is showing in terms of yeah. legislation withdrawing of legislation and dealing with the agitating farmers yeah yeah this is something which is you know uh, which which tells you about the character both the political character and the economic character of the present government mm -hmm. um you know instead of addressing instead of talking to them and you know uh, taking taking measures uh, in consultation with them in consultation with the larger civil society at least in consultation with the legislature elected legislature yeah yeah you know this is the kind of uh, route that the government is following now no, let us now yes. uh, focus on uh, yeah. the white paper Can and I, the uh, I, I just want to come in here uh, now this time round uh, from what we have learned in the last two days is that a farm leader said on television yesterday uh, that they have been talking to this government for the last 6 months and ask they have asked them as to what happened to the to the core demand which the government said they would address uh, yeah. after the withdrawal of the agitation core demand was there was a MSP. clear cut assurance then assure assure that that msp will be guarantee guaranteed msp will be worked into the law or some form of uh, you know assurance uh, 
uh, written into the law would come and the leader also said that they've been in touch with them but the government was not taking them seriously they waited 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 they waited for the interim budget to get over and then they waited for the last parliament session to get over so so that they they they're not accused of you know of jump jumping the gun you know, or <clears throat> taking any premature action and they they've taken the uh, uh, final uh, sort of call to to again agitate on the borders of delhi and haryana uh, so 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 that as you said it also does it also tell you the nature of the government and its attitude to 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 democratic discourse etc <clears throat> Okay, now uh, let's talk about the interim budget and uh, the uh, white paper. Uh, when do these two were the most important documents uh, from the government, which are available to the uh, public now, and both of them talked about uh, important economic documents. Um, but you see, I think in both the documents, a huge opportunity uh, was uh, squandered by the government. Because, you know, somebody like me would expect the government to say what has been its own record in the last 10 years compared to what they have promised, what they had set out to do. Yeah. Because they had set out to do a lot of things which were very attractive, which were very important. Had the government stuck to the kind of policy pronouncements and the objectives that they had announced, during the run up to the 2014 election or subsequently you know the things would have been much better today i'll tell you what for instance i mean we all know very well that uh, during the 2014 run up to the elections uh, the then would be prime minister or the prime ministerial candidate went on saying that he would create a huge employment opportunities yeah, to yeah. grow jobs yeah. then they would bring back the black money and yeah. after coming to office, and and, and, dub, and yeah. of course doubling uh, the farm, the farm income, farm, income. farm, and, farm income, yeah, fifth, yeah, and and uh, various Swaminathan things. committee implementation of Swaminathan committee, Swaminathan committee, which which, yeah. which is the, the heart of Swaminathan committee's report or recommendation, yeah. was implementation of MSP, a yeah. guaranteed implementation of an MSP is is the core of Swaminathan committee report. Sure. And then, and the, and, and, and after, Ravakar, I, I also wanted to talk about the, the the great paradox of Swaminathan, M. S. Swaminathan being given a Bharat Ratna, and yes. his the core, the core recommendation of uh, of Swaminathan remaining unimplemented for ten years. Uh, I just wanted also to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, well, because you've uh, raised the uh, uh, the Swaminathan committee report, and the honor Swaminathan was conferred on. Uh, and uh, the agitation today and the government's attitude towards the core recommendation of Swaminathan yeah. uh, goes to show that the government, you know, um, the, the, the honor that was conferred on Swaminathan and others um, would only go to dilute the, 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 the importance of Bharat Ratna. It was, it was as though you know it was being a lip service and tokenism kind of a thing True. Uh, otherwise you know what swaminathan would have been much more happy with would be the the uh, the msp guarantee not a yeah, yeah. yeah sure no. yeah, yeah. Uh, yes uh, uh, leave that aside for a while but look at look at after after having taken office the the kind of uh, uh, programs that the government conceived, like uh, Make in India, Startup India, Kalo India, um, you know, many uh, programs yeah. which 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 had the potential to transform the uh, the quality of life of Indians and transform the Indian economy, transform the the Indian entire landscape, yeah. policy landscape. Uh, but that was not to be. That was that is because you know later on one one would realize that you know these are all uh, you know uh, headline management efforts rather than seriousness. Yeah. Um, because uh, you know uh, Skill India, Startup India, where are those? 
Where yeah. are those initiatives? Mm -hmm. uh, and had they been really followed up? Had they been really see, with seriousness implemented? You know, this government, as you know, Venu, this, this government is very good at, uh, you know, taking credit and, you know, also announcing their achievements from the rooftops. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have you come across anybody in the government talking about, you know, Make in India has achieved this much and, you know, yeah. Halo India has achieved this much and Startup India, this is the achievement. Even the respective ministries' annual reports also do not talk about this. Yeah. This is, so that is yeah. This is so that is a, what you just uh, Prabhakar, what you just said is is a bit like creating headlines and creating yeah. narratives which are bereft of facts in the sense which have no right. content. You know, if you have it, no real content, is that it is just one one morning's newspaper headline management or the one evening's television headlines management. After that, after the event is over, the entire thing is forgotten. It's true, just true. the propaganda. Now, for instance, look look at uh, look at Beti Padao, Beti Bachao. That could have, you know, transformed the uh, gender question. It could have impacted the gender question in India in such a in such a way. You know, their their uh, uh, enrollment ratio, their job opportunities, their skilling, yeah. uh, and these could have been transformed very deeply. But then, yeah. nearly eighty percent of the funds allocated to this particular program was utilized for publicity and and yeah. you know of whom this is the kind of travesty that we see now let us let us see you know uh, another important uh, front for uh, the 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 white paper could have been where are we on the price rise situation yeah um, you know let us let us uh, not talk about high fundas of you know percentages and, and these things because you see you know very well uh, the the percentage of inflation is mm -hmm. coming down doesn't mean anything because you know it is the it is the additional rise in prices that is being measured by is it whether yes. it is 4.2 or 5.2 or 6.2 it is not coming down from if it is if it is brought down if the government uh, uh, claims that it, it is brought down from eight uh, percent to six percent or four percent to five percent it doesn't mean the prices are coming down the rate at which the prices are rising is slowing down that's mm -hmm. all now for instance yeah. i do my own shopping you know I, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm not talking about uh, 2014, 2012 and all that. I'm talking to you, the prices, the comparison between November 23. That's about how long, you know, November, December, Jan, February, just four yes. months ago. Four months ago, what did I pay for dal? What did I pay for cooking oil? What did I pay for my vegetables? What did I pay for my sugar? Mm -hmm. What did I pay for, uh, you know, even in simple yeah. things like green chilies and ginger. Now, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I've, I've been, I've, I've noted down. Now, for instance, dal, I pay now 170 rupees as against 110 rupees in November. For urad dal, I pay 130 rupees now as against 100 rupees in November. Jaggery, I used to pay 42 rupees, now I pay 50 rupees. Sugar. I used to pay 34 rupees, now I'm paying 42 rupees. You know, yeah. simple things like ginger in the market. I used to pay yeah. 95 rupees, now I'm paying 120 rupees. Green chilies, I used to pay 65 rupees, now I pay 80 rupees. True. Now, but, this, yeah. this, 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 is, this is something that we need to, uh, we need to take into account. Yeah. Our, our, therefore, see, it, has, it has an effect. It has an effect yeah. on the contraction of domestic savings. Real incomes, yeah. Real incomes, my purchasing power. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, when I don't save, when, when the atmosphere is this, you know, when, I'm, when, when my purchasing power is brought down, then mm -hmm. the supply side is also impacted. True. That is the reason why, in spite of the uh, production linked incentives, your manufacturing is not taking off. Your manufacturing, the, the, the percentage of manufacturing in your uh, GDP yeah. is, you know, for a long time, it was 1.2, 1.3%. Now, you know, in just one quarter, it, it's just there is a little up, uptick. Yeah. Why? 
and then you know link that to link that to the number of growing number of people who are relinquishing their indian citizenship ultra high net, net worth individuals they're going away that is one and then the the, the kind of uh, domestic investment notwithstanding what the captains of industry tell you True. but the real proof of pudding is in their investment True. True. but so you know, I'll, that, uh, that yeah, that yeah, is not I'll, I'll, yeah you know I'll, I'll come to that because I, I have in my sequence of questions I, I have that in my mind uh, so I, I will uh, it is true Parkala what you're saying is right that in in the if you take Modi's ten years uh, as a block uh, you you'll find that that the investment rate savings rate even private consumption they're pretty and and, pretty and the flat. incident and incidence yeah. of di indirect taxes on the population yeah yeah no no i'm what i'm saying uh, i'm uh, uh Parkala, i'm taking you back to the farm sector now the, the because the farm sector is linked to all these things now here is my uh, here's my proposition i want you to comment on uh, this uh, uh the question that i want to ask you the there was in the dealing with the farm sector they were this regime uh, they shifted goalposts so many times you know initially if you remember mr modi in his 2014 campaign used to say uh, swaminathan will be implemented then they went to the supreme court when the farmers kept demanding swaminathan uh, you know msp guaranteed msp etc 50% over cost of production including the imputed uh, rental value of land uh, the government went to the supreme court and said that they they will find it difficult they, they, uh, to, to implement uh, Swaminathan's main recommendation, which is 50% worried about the costs. Then they shifted the goalpost to doubling of farm income. Uh, so the point I'm making is, throughout, there was a lack of conviction about, about really, yeah. Yeah. you know, implementing reforms in the agriculture sector, putting more money in the hands of farmers, creating a, a, as you said, agriculture feeds into everything. Now, because in 10 years they did not, they neglected agriculture, it, it probably led to other negative impacts such as flat private consumption because rural consumption, you know, is a, is a big chunk of overall consumption, right? If you ask the Hindustan lever, uh, see your or bajaj scooter bajaj motorcycle they all say that the rural markets they've always served the rural markets and their growth has been flat and negative uh, in recent years consistently negative growth so so because they neglected uh, the farm sector and they, they were cyn nearly cynical in my view about uh, dealing with the uh, farm sector you know leadership uh, in the negotiation they uh, they probably created all these other spillover problems, private consumption, as you said, savings, uh, you know, lack of incomes, rural wages. We all know, I mean, in real terms, I mean, flat. Now, do you think this would have actually, the farm sector uh, distress would have, has led to all these other problems in the economy? I mean, how, how much would it have affected the, the larger economy uh, as a whole, uh, in your view? Yeah. You see, um, of course, it has a tremendous impact on the on the demand side. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the doubling of farms farm income, which was promised by the government. If that really happened, we can imagine yeah. how how the economy would have taken off. Yeah. That's right. But you see, instead of that, what happened was that at, you know, uh, before COVID, you had a large number of people who were dependent on farms migrating to the urban sector now when yeah. urban sector received a huge shock then they came back but and they don't find the work and that is the reason why where you have uh, a huge rise in the demand for mandrita okay yeah sure yeah you see um, and you know that is because the the unemployment situation is very grim way now yeah. let us let us not you know let us not get uh, um, into a debate between uh, you know whether it is seven point in rural areas and seven point six yeah. or seven point eight or ten point three or you know that that's not the point. The point is this: 
You remember, 20, I think in the beginning of 2022, you know, um, for 35,000 non-technical preferred categories jobs in the Indian railways, in UP and Bihar, there were a huge number of youngsters who were fighting to get into the train to go and write the exam. For 35,000 yeah. positions, the, the, the number of applicants were 1 crore 25 lakhs. You know, if this gives you an idea of what is the depth and seriousness of the situation mm -hmm. in un unemployment. Now, you know, now in today's India, People are lining up in UP, in Madhya Pradesh, in Chhattisgarh, in Haryana, you know, to go to Gaza, mm -hmm. risking their lives to escape the unemployment situation here in India. You know, that is the kind of situation. You know, and we have the the highest, one of the highest uh, uh, youth unemployment ratio percentages yeah. in the world, 24%. Our, our neighbor Bangladesh has only 12%. This is the kind of uh, youth unemployment, you know, that we are suffering from. And, you know, uh, this again goes back to um, are the youth, are they, they're unemployed. What happened to your uh, skilling? They're also not only unemployed, but there are so many of them are unemployable because your your Skill India project has not taken off. Yeah. You know, that that is one. So on the one hand, Vinu, there's a there's a serious price rise. The rural distress is very deep. And incomes are stagnant. And incomes are stagnant and falling. Your, your the, 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 the sale of SUVs is growing. But when you look at the sale of two wheelers and even smaller vehicles, which, which is a reflection of what is happening in the uh, sectors which are uh, dominated by the lower middle class in the poorer sections. Now, yeah. we know if all is well, why is it that the government have decided to give free ration to about 82 crore people? Yeah. Why? Because so I've, they, I've raised this question many times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, the government often talks about, uh, you know, uh, India previously was uh, in the Fragile 5 and Fragile 5. Yeah, yeah. That, but, that's the white paper, yeah. But, but you see, yes. But today, we have Fragile 82 crores in India. 82 yeah. crore Fragile lives is yeah. what is the legacy of these 10 years. Do you think that's an acknowledge, acknowledgement uh, of this, by this government that the things are... It, it is, all, it is. The things are not not all that uh, uh, well because uh, Targula, they also uh, in the narrative they claim that that the that Indian society is is entering a period of Amrit Kal, which is uh, translated loosely um, uh, in in English, uh, is a golden period of prosperity. Now, uh, how, how does how does a golden period of prosperity? Square with the uh, 82 crore uh, people, as you said, uh, uh, having to uh, be given free ration. You know, you know uh, another important thing in this context, we know is this. You know, if the government finds that you know people are going hungry, they have to do something about it. The government will first give a free ration, announce a free ration for one year, and see what it's going to be. But yeah. at a time when the government announces the free ration for the next five years. Yeah. Which means that they have no hope. Also, they have no. Yeah, see, mind there you, is no room. Uh, yeah, mind you, uh, uh, they, they are also claiming that by 2028, India will be the third largest economy. So while India moves towards, I mean, assuming that it does in a in a linear kind of uh, progression, the uh, third largest economy with 82 crore people uh, having to be uh, give. Given free ration again doesn't square. Uh, the, the, the two don't square. And and and, and 22, 24 percent uh, youth unemployment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so many crores of people with free ration. Yeah. And then rural market market not picking up. Rural yeah. credit offtake is not picking up. Mm -hmm. And you know the the the, the lower income uh, groups are under tremendous pressure. Where do yeah. the Indian economy has not recovered yet 
from the shock that it has got from the demonetization. The Which is not entire, mentioned, by the way, it's not mentioned yes, in the, in, yes. in, the, See, uh, the, the, in the, in the, in the, in the white paper, yeah. The, the, the white paper is, 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 is significant in omi two omissions. One is the omission of demonetization and yeah. silence about the employment situation. Employment situation. Yeah. If, if these two are not addressed by the government, which means the government is in denial, mm. you know, first of all, you have to understand it and admit that there is a problem. Only can you really deal with it. Mm. But yeah. I think this government fights shy of admitting or even acknowledging to itself that there is a serious problem on these two counts. This is something which is dangerous. It, you know, it, it really made me concerned about these things. But do you know, think again, they, they... I, I, I told you this is not a this is not a, um, a punch and Judy show between UPA and NDA. I'm not yeah, going yeah. to get into that. But you know, yeah. what have you promised? What have you delivered? And what was your performance six months ago on the price front? I I, I read out. Uh, yeah. You know what I paid. What I have been paid. Yeah. And what is the situation today? Why are people lining up to go to Gaza? Why are people lining up, you know, for 35,000 jobs? Why are uh, 1 crore 25 lakhs are, you know, flocking uh, to, to right to examination? Yeah. What, what does it indicate? And you yourself have admitted that 82 crore people needed free ration, which means yeah. that they, they are not able to pull the food. They are not able to buy the food. Yeah. And, you know, Availability of food and the ability to buy the food are two different things, uh, Venu. And you know, yeah. we, we, the way we are treating, the way we are tackling issues raised by people, farmers who have made this country self reliant on in the food sector. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, from. from uh, we must, uh, uh, Prabhakar, we, we, we must remind the audience here that throughout through COVID, the worst period of COVID, they were the only farmers, the only people who are upping the production and you know creating more and more food stocks, helping government uh, you know build up much you know, bigger food stocks. Yeah. When if you look at the GDP numbers during the COVID period, the yeah. only number which was positive, which had given us some hope, is the is the agriculture growth. Agriculture, and agriculture growth has nothing to do with the government. It is these yeah. farmers. Who have who have really, you know, uh, defended the GDP numbers? Numbers. If, yeah. if 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 agriculture had also gone into negative, our yeah. our negative growth rate would have been disastrous. Actually, true. That's because why it was a bit of a shock that the way farmers were treated uh, in 2021, after what they, their contribution to so visible contribution to. To, yes. As you said, to the to GDP growth, you know. Yeah. yeah. Because your manufacturing has uh, slumped. Yeah. If service sector has slumped, except the government and armed forces component of your GDP, everything yeah. else has declined except the farm sector. And the farm okay. sector was the one which was upheld by these farmers who are agitating today. Yeah. And, uh, and Prabhakar, if I keep coming back to this, uh, uh, this, you know, this imagined uh, situation, if indeed they had doubled farmers' incomes, you know, just imagine what would have been the the upside in the economy. How much demand it would have generated. How much Philip it would have given to manufacturing. They would have expanded capacity, which they have not done so far. Ten years, our manufacturing sector is not expanding capacity. Uh, whether it is whatever you take, you know, uh, and uh, and and uh, the finance minister keeps urging the manufacturing sector has has been urging last two years. Please expand capacity after giving them huge tax breaks. In 2019, if you remember, one lakh forty-five thousand crore a year. Now, if you add up uh, the tax break that they've got, they've already got more than six lakh crores of uh, tax breaks, right? Year after it's year. huge, way, no? It's huge. Yeah, and and, but, and but, but, but 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 they're not responding. That they, they're, they, not they're not responding. responding. And, and Pramagar, I want to pose that again. Yesterday, on on television channel, the government was feeding this this narrative to various anchors, saying that if if we were to buy all of uh, uh, farmers' produce uh, with a minimum guaranteed MSP, the cost would go up to nearly 11 lakh, 12 lakh crores, which is more than the annual infrastructure uh, spend, 10 lakh crores, which is 10 lakh crores. 
So they were trying to create an either or situation that do we but then uh, do we but do then, we not create then, infrastructure and and do we only only give money to farmers and not create infrastructure? I mean, I I found that very. Uh, but then, where do, where, where do, what kind of a haircut the government has given to uh, the, the 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 banks? Fourteen lakh crore. You know, if, and if you if you is a write off total up, write off the fourteen lakh crore. Yeah. Yes. And and why why are you why are you cringing about eleven lakh crores or ten lakh crores or you make a start? This is one. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll tell you. I, I've said this elsewhere, but I want to say this now to you, Velo. Is that you know this government? The biggest problem the government faces is it does not have a, a coherent, well thought out economic philosophy. Yeah, you know, you've been saying it, this. Yeah, yeah. It it wants it wants to hunt with the hounds and run with the hare. Yeah. I'll tell you why I say this because I mean, is this government neoliberal? Has it signed up to neoliberalism, or? Is it a welfare sort of a thing? What, where, where exactly do you stand, or do yeah. you want to combine these? If you want to combine these two, in what proportion do you combine? Yeah. Now, on the one hand, you write off loans, you bring down the corporate tax, and your your incidence of indirect taxation progressively go, goes up, and which hits the poor actually, which hits the poor. Yeah. Yes, more. It disproportionately yeah. hits the poor. We know. Yeah, um, and this government repeatedly, very unthinkingly, says, you know, that our GST is growing. GST revenues are growing. GST revenues growing means what? You are taxing the, you are collecting more and more taxes from the people who are poorer. Poor. Yeah. It is the indirect tax. The incidence of indirect tax in any economy is on the poorer sections. So if yeah. the government takes pride in collecting more and more from the indirect taxes, it is in a way inadvertently, unwittingly admitting that it is collecting more from the, more money from the poor people. So this is one. So it, it's not clear where they are. I mean, they, they would they would, you know, in their history, if you take, they would oppose liberalization, they would oppose GST. But so then you, now and so you you basically you're suggesting that that the economic philosophy is also very confused. They, they, there is no clear total, uh, It is total confusion. They, 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 they do not, there is no coherent policy. You, 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 you just see, Vedu, um, on the one hand, uh, you know, they, they, no, they, they talk about reforms. Yeah. Reforms, they, they want us, they want to market reforms as selling of assets. Selling of asset is not a reform. You reform the way the sec sector functions. You reform yeah. the way the industry functions. You make it more efficient. For instance, let us take a nearer home to me is the Vizag steel plant. Now, Vizag yeah. steel plant suffers because it doesn't have a captive mine mm. or iron ore. Now, give mm. that to them and see and, and you know reform their management practices and see if it is still incurring losses. Then you can. But if you have behind your my back. Uh, in your head, you somehow wanted to take this out of it and give it to some of your cronies. Yeah. And therefore, you go on giving bad name to these public sector undertakings. Now, there's, there's one more important thing. You see, um, you know, the way the, the welfare is combined under this government mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that the government would like to be seen as somebody who is giving two or three gas cylinders free of cost, you know, some food grains free of cost, you know, or some um, money transfer into the farmer's account. Yeah. This is this is the face that they are they are trying to show you. But then yeah. two or three gas cylinders to the poor people, but two or three airports to your cronies. Mm -hmm. You see what is happening? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And you know to uh, uh, a few thousands into the farmer's account and a huge write off of the corporate law yeah yeah you see the contrast now are you here or are you there yeah are you are you a full blooded neoliberal or are you still trying to combine the old indian middle path of you know mixed economy trying to balance these two are you, you you just say that yeah and you see for instance Look at the look at the kind of I mean it, it it gives you an idea of what the uh, the confusion in the government. 
if you look at the look, look at the covid stimulus package it yes. addressed the supply side it did not address it did not put money in the pockets of the people mm-hmm. when you when people do not have money to demand things if you give money to the supply side to the manufacturer if they, if they manufacture who is going to buy that uh, exactly. and that is yeah, the re- that is, yeah. that is yeah. the reason why you know covid impact was much more severe in india of course sure, we forgot sure. all that that's a different thing yeah but, and, know, our, the, and our, the, our, our, yeah our recovery is also the, has been not the economy the economy by, really by our own standards yeah yeah yes yes it it, it really and, took a shock shock yeah from so fi- no, i want to ask you a final question we, we just about a minute left you have laid down all the problems you know and we, we all the data shows distress everywhere it is whether it's a you know whether it's real incomes flat stagnant saving rate stagnant consumption stagnant now in the face of all this as a political economist you 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 you're a you watch the the, the political economy very closely what would be, be the impact of all this uh, is is are the people who are suffering uh, what is your sense are they are they still voting for this regime after being unhappy or uh, what is what do you think is on their mind what, what, what is what could be the collective response in the coming election well this is uh, uh, this is this, this is something which is very important uh, to me uh, you know um uh, you see it all I mean, there is there is there is a there is a felt experience yeah there is a felt experience a, yeah, yeah which is a huge economic distress but yeah. then what is foregrounded you know after all you know for instance when when we were about to touch 100 rupees a liter of uh, fuel we were all yeah. agitated for a day today it is what 109 112 in hyderabad yeah when dollar was uh, you know rupee was cro- about to touch 80 rupees we were we, 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 were, we were we were very unsettled for a day but then it is more than 83 rupees today but you yeah. see the thing is that that is the felt experience the wages mm-hmm. are falling the consumption is falling and you know there's a lot of uh, distress etc but what is being foregrounded is a temple mm-hmm. you know uh, that you know we, we are we are bringing back a past glory so if you if you are effectively foregrounding in the people's mind a past worshiping narrative yeah you know that exactly is what this government is doing and if the economic distress is not foregrounded definitely the ones which the government is trying to foreground would decide the electoral outcomes and of course electoral outcomes again are very skewed in our uh, particular first past the post uh, system and you know you have uh, yeah. two or three northern indian states wiping out the complete mandate of uh, the southern indian sure. states uh, you know yeah. this this kind yeah. of a uh, thing is there with you see i'll tell you what with with just about 37.7 or th- about 38% uh, vote share you can have a monstrous majority in the legislature so that is the one which is really in a way if at all Mm-hmm. is likely to bail out the government but otherwise the economic dis- distress is is so harsh now that if that is foregrounded the government is going to have a very tough time okay so essentially you're suggesting that that's what the opposition task is today so, so which which means which, that, yeah. which means which means to my mind when you let me say this uh, uh, as, a, as a conclusion there is nothing inevitable i don't mm-hmm. believe in inevitabilism i believe in human agency who does what and who does what who does effectively okay with, with, so do you that, succeed a, in for, do you succeed in yeah. foregrounding the economic distress or do you succeed in foregrounding the temple which narrative a, gets foregrounded yeah. that's a very good note to end on parakala uh, prabhakar thanks uh, for uh, talking to us uh, it's been a uh, it's been a good conversation and uh, let's see what happens in the next 3 th- months thanks for joining thank you very much thanks a lot bye bye the wire ke aur videos dekhne ke liye subscribe kare aur bell icon par click kare swatantra patrakarita ki aarthik madad karne ke liye description mein diye gaye link par jaye aur apni rashi chune